Hello and welcome to my sewing room. I have a couple of things to show you this week. Um, I did have a go at making those French shorts. Okay, uh, we'll come back to that one. Um, and this is my hundredth edition of Hashtag Friday Sews. So my name is Carol, this is my channel Sew Carol and you are very welcome in my sewing room today. I cannot believe it is my hundredth Friday Sews. Now I know a lot of you are way ahead in those numbers but Friday Sews is dear to my heart but of course it was started by Jen, the lovely Jen, from today's Jen's Sewing Room but it was where I started this whole channel doing that first ever Friday Sews. So it means a lot to me. And of course, later in this video, I will be doing the draw to celebrate the 5,000 subscribers that I now have. So thank you one and all for that. And I will do the draw later on in the video. I need my husband's help. And at the moment he's on a conference call. So <laughs> I will come back to that. I've had a good week in the sewing room and I did tick off things I wanted to do. So I've got to start with those French shorts, the, um, the French pattern that I got. I will just get them for you and the pattern. So this was a pattern I picked up in a French sewing shop a couple of years ago whilst on holiday over there. Patron de Couture and it's uh, multi-size for trousers and short trousers, um, a pair of shorts. Initially when I bought this I thought it would be for jersey but it um, it isn't, it's a woven um, but you've got a band, ties and a fly front. Now here they are and I have to say I'm going to try them on for you. Um, they're definitely wearable but not my normal type of shorts and they, they took me a while to make these I will say. So all the instructions of course are in French um, and whilst I did school French and a couple of little school exams in French kind of know my way around a bit but this is a different kettle of fish. Um, I used Google Translate as well to help me and that threw up some interesting translations, uh, I will say. I don't know if ever anyone's ever used Google Translate, you know, where you hover the camera over and it, yeah, it changes quite often what it's, it's translating. It, <laughs> it did cause a few head scratching issues. Now I have to say, um, I have done about 30 zip flies in my time and I don't often have a problem. I've, I've used quick sew instructions all the time which are amazing and simplicity but I thought I'd give these instructions a go, completely different and let's see how I get on. Oh my word, uh, I, I could not get what they were on about most of the time and I put the zip on and, and then it wasn't working and then it was sort of all sewn on the wrong ways and in the end I had to abandon their instructions and, and just kind of work it out in my own head what to do. Um, I also, I'm actually not very good with my left and right, um, which is very strange. If someone says left quickly then I've, I've really got to think about it. So left and right in French was even more difficult for me. I, <laughs> I was all over the place, believe me. Izzy, if you're watching this, uh, just don't listen because it was terrible. Now, what I want to say to you about it, obviously the instructions were a very crazy way to put a zip on. Um, I can't say it worked because I didn't get it right. What I did want to say was they sewed up the trousers in a completely different way than I've ever done before. So normally you have front and backs of trousers and you either do it uh, two ways. So you've got front and back, you normally sew them on the inner seam, inner leg seam. Then you can either sew them down the side seams as well and then you insert one in the other or you do it the other way where you sew the crotch curve and then finish them off. This was weird and let me just see if I can find it. So you've obviously sewn the front, they get you to sew the back crotch and then the side seams and then the inner leg seams sort of up and round. 
it worked but I've never sewn trousers like that before of course what I don't know is whether some of the indie patterns use that method um, because obviously I'm a big four fan um, so yeah I mean it worked but now what I was initially worried about was the pleats on the front um, they weren't pleats they were actually just folds and they didn't look attractive at all so what I actually did was sew them down a little bit on the front because it was not a flattering look also on the back it was similar you just kind of fold in a chunk I didn't like that at all it looked awful so I actually made them into darts and I just kind of guessed so it's still the same distance away uh, the pleat you took in but I just guessed how low I would put them and that to me is a much better finish on the back just rather than having kind of a pleat it just it wasn't attractive at all believe me here they are now you will see in the uh, if I do a bit of video for you <laughs> that uh, the one thing that is crazy about them is the length of this tie but I will demonstrate that um, in the video I actually don't like this and I'm probably going to shorten it quite a bit it's just unnecessary and makes me feel like a big wrapped up Christmas present they they've turned out quite well um, as I said they're not a flattering fit for me um, but they're they're made quite nicely and I achieve what I wanted to achieve um, I think they're okay I will wear them I will wear them at home without a doubt but not sure I'd take them on a holiday on to another quite successful make and you will see it behind me but it is the bag from new look 6095 i have made this kind of very basic tote bag before um and i have made another one now i found this uh fabric gosh now my friend gave me this it was a curtain sample she gave it to me last year i think and i made a Oh, was this time last year actually because it was for a sewing bee uh, challenge instagram challenge thing and um i made a rucksack well this time i had some left over so i made my tote bag that i wanted to make i really really like this now i in my head what i wanted to achieve this time was put in an inner pocket a proper zipped inner pocket and i was thrilled that i managed to work this out so I've done a kind of similar welt opening before when I did all my uh, tissue box holders. So I'm, in my head I was thinking it's gonna be like that but you just insert a zip behind and obviously make a pocket and I achieved it. But it wasn't without a little drama, I will say. <laughs> so when I was working it out, I was working out where to put it. I had the lining and I folded the lining in half and then somewhere along the line, I just forgotten to open out the lining as one and only do the pocket on one side. I just forgot that the lining was folded and barged ahead, doing the opening, cutting the opening through two layers, um, doing it. And I stood back and I looked at it and I was so proud of myself. And then I'd realized I'd gone through both the front and the back of the lining. Hard to explain, I think I'll put some photos in. <sighs> what did I, I, I just, I, what do you do? So the only thing I could think of to do is I didn't have enough fabric to do another lining. And I certainly wasn't gonna get rid of this beautiful little zip opening. I decided to chop one side shorter and I'll put a photo in to explain it. And then find another bit of fabric. So that side had to have a join where I had to add a little bit on the top. But never mind, never mind. I managed to work it out and um, I got my zip pocket in there this time. Very proud of myself. Now I know a lot of you lovely viewers are gonna say and recommend some videos I could have watched to work this out. But sometimes I just like working things out for myself and I get a real kick out of it if I manage to achieve it and I did um, and now I know how to do it but yes thank you very much I know I could have looked up many many YouTube clips on how to do it but where's the fun in that <laughs> now so this is the bag and in this bag right this moment is all the names for the draw um, but I'll have to come back to that as he's still on the phone something else I managed to get made this week was a pair of short pajamas for my daughter 
I wanted to use a McCall's pattern that I showed you last week. I think it's 7515. What I didn't realise was um, I needed a size bigger. I thought I had two copies of that and I didn't. And it's actually out of print now. So I had to go back to a pattern I've used many, many times, Simplicity 9337. So I just made the little short pyjamas. I'm really pleased with them. I'm jealous of them. I always am. If you watch my channel, you know I'm always jealous of the <laughs> pyjamas I make for my daughter. It's this lovely cotton jersey fabric that I got on sale from a local fabric shop in Dorset. And I got it for, I think it was something like crazy, like five pounds a metre. And I've seen recently, they still have it and it's back up at 19 pound a metre. So I really did get a bargain when I got this. I didn't have quite enough to do the waistband, but I did have some very um, similar colour cotton jersey and that's made quite a comfy, soft uh, waistband. So obviously I uh, haven't given them to her yet, so I can't get any photos. Um, if I do by the time this video goes out, but she probably won't want to model the pyjamas anyway. But two pockets in, made them shorter as she likes them. So mummy did good, um, I can now give it to her and she's she's been asking for these for a while. I haven't told you what I'm wearing, um, in case you don't recognise it, it is the Style Arc Rafe polo top or Raf polo top I made um, earlier in the year out of this cotton jersey had a bit of a devil doing this bit here it looks fine though it looks fine and um, yeah I'm always back into winter stuff if you've watched any UK vloggers this week will be moaning about how cold and rainy it's been and it really has been revolting weather here so um, yeah I thought I'd go back into the kind of wintry stuff so I dug it out to wear to show you. I was on school pickup duty on Monday so I picked up my oldest grandson and the first thing he asked me and he asks me every time I see him was have you finished my Pokemon jacket yet and I had to say no and I thought this is it enough is enough I said right we're gonna go home I've only got one more patch to embroider out and I've got something to sew on and then you're done. So if you want to help me, which he was thrilled about, then we'll go home now and we will do it. And that's what we did. So I have one more Pokemon character to put on the embroidery machine. So we all know what it's like. We can't leave them when they're going. It's too risky. So I set it all up and I said, watch that tell me if it clunks, don't touch anything, don't press anything. And he did it and I put a picture up because he was literally like this watching it and it was 40 minutes long and he kept saying it's nearly finished nanny and I would say mm, no it's got another 10,000 stitches to go <laughs> but anyway he was so excited um, we cut it up so it finished successfully uh, I cut it out and I embroidered it on the jacket just with a teeny tiny zigzag like I've done all the others and this smile in this photo is enough to prove why we love sewing for others because he is in love with that jacket. Uh, a while ago, I, if you watch my channel, you will know that I made a similar one for my littlest grandson. Uh, that was a Lightning McQueen jacket, but that was actually one I copied um, from a jacket he had before and uh, we lost it. So that was easy to copy. This one, yeah, I didn't do such a great job, but he loves it anyway. I managed to kind of replicate the same sleeve that my youngest grandson had, kind of put insert a bit of fabric and put some sort of twill tape on and the patches and the patches on the back. He is thrilled. Um, and the great thing is obviously one day he will grow out of it, but the little one coming up likes Pokemon so he can have it. So I was almost as pleased as he was that that jacket is now finished. Next week we are going for a week in our holiday home and as you may know we've it's the other side of Dorset but I have got a sewing machine down there uh, my old genome sewing machine down there and obviously my husband last week bought me some presents of a cutting mat and a bag to take my stuff down in so I'm all set up and I've sorted out three projects to take with me I don't know if I'll get around to doing them because it is meant to be a holiday um, so don't know what we'll be doing but if we do have the evenings free then I have three projects to take down. Now first one I'll show you is I was in Hobbycraft uh, locally 
getting something for somebody else. You know how it is, but you have to walk down the fabric aisle. And there was this beautiful piece of cotton. I have something about this. I just had to buy it. I love the kind of the blue and the white and it's almost like a Dutch pattern, isn't it? Um, absolutely love that. I got only got a meter of it and of course I forgot it's much narrower than normal fabric. So what I think I'll do is I'll just make up this new look 6483. Um, I've done this top many times. I've done it with sleeves. Um, I'm going to have to see how much fabric I've got but hopefully I will get that made up. Now you know when you're sat watching YouTube um, very often in the next video plays I like watching those uh, creative channels. So when I'm blowing drying my hair or something like that, you can't listen to the audio ones. And you know these channels that come up with, a, they start with some amazing music and it's just someone sewing and creating something, no words. I love watching those <laughs> when I dry my hair. And there was this one to use an old pair of jeans and some patchwork pieces to make a bag. Now I will put the link down below and I'll put a picture in of what it looks like at the end but I really wanted to have a go at that. So I've cut up some of my husband's old jeans to get a bit of denim for the bottom. Um, I've got all the zips ready, I've cut out all the squares you need. Uh, so they're seven centimetre squares, two and three quarter inches, something like that. Um, yeah, and I will, so I'm hopefully going to try and have a go at doing that. It looks simple, um, and obviously there's a video to follow. As I said, I'll put the link down below. But yeah, if we can use a, reuse a pair of jeans, and this pair of jeans is, it's really nice uh, colour and weight of fabric. So hopefully I will have a go at making that bag. The third project I'm really not sure about, and I don't think I'll probably get time to do. Somebody, uh, a lovely viewer last week, or maybe the week before, recommended the Friday pattern Donny top. So I got hold of it because I will have a go. If someone suggests something to me, I will have a go. So I really like the look of it, but what worries me, it is a very boxy top. Now I've looked at some other versions that people have made and it is boxy. Um, I did speak to the lovely Izzy from Dizzy Quilts and Sews to see if she'd ever made it. Um, she hadn't, but uh, Christine Sews a lot, has made it and really liked it. And of course, if it is too boxy, I think as Izzy said, or I mean, I can add ties or we could shape it in, but I'm not too sure what to make it out of yet. For me, I think I would want to make it out of a draped fabric. Initially in my head, I bought this really light piece, um, lightweight piece of linen white linen but I think that will be wrong for it I'm not sure or I've got uh, two pieces of viscose I've got a really nice piece or this piece that I really don't know what to do with so I could just make it in that it'd be a nice fit that will make it drapey as I want and it might look very different um, but I'm certainly not too worried about that so I would like to think in the next couple of weeks I could have a go at that because that'd be nice, just a casual little boxy blouse. We are away next week but I will film in advance a fabric wheel of fate. Yes, the fabric wheel is back. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you're new to my channel then I have this lovely wheel that my father made for me and I section it up and I use it to determine my next project. So I've done it with fabrics that I really didn't think were going to be successful and forced me to make them up and they were wonderful. Um, I did lots of kind of sweatshirting French terries last time with it. That was really successful. This time it's coming back with a different twist on it. Um, really going to help me use some fabrics and some patterns. So I'm excited to bring that back to you next week. So watch out for that video. If you are subscribed, obviously you will pick it up in the feed anyway. And that's kind of a hint to, if you're not subscribed, then maybe you should. <laughs> so we are now going to do the draw now for the £50 voucher or equivalent if you live in America or abroad. So I'm going to do it Minerva, but if you are in America and I can get a Joann's for you and you prefer that, then we'll work it out. So 
if we're going to take a name out, there was 179 comments, so there are 179 names in there. So good luck everybody. So we'll take one out and if we read your name out, I will put it along the bottom of the screen. But if you can email me and I will put my email at the bottom of the description box and then we can get it sorted. So I'm going to use the bag that I made this week. Had to be big for all the names. So Chris, we'll uh, do the draw. So I can, I can be blamed for whoever <laughs> gets picked out or not picked out. You got just one? I have. Barbara Francis 5196. So that is Barbara Francis 5196. Congratulations, Barbara. Well Get done. in touch with me and uh, we can sort out your prize. Thank you. <laughs> so as I've mentioned before, the weather in England has been horrible this week and looking forward to next week when we're away, it's going to be equally as cold and wet. I'm sure we'll have a great time. Uh, we've got lots of walks planned and we're really going to explore down that area and maybe venture into Devon. Hopefully I will be making a trip to Beyond the Pink Door shop with Adam during the week. Um, we're going to see if we can get that done. I'm so looking forward to actually going to see the Beyond the Pink Door fabric shop in reality because obviously it used to be in Ireland, it's now relocated over to Dorset and this will be the first chance I get to go and maybe have a bit of a shop. The photos I'm going to leave at the end aren't particularly exciting I have to say. Uh, I did a walk this week when we went over into the New Forest um, so, so we got some pictures of some cows and horses as usual but we did come across some wild orchids, uh, the Heathland orchids, and they were so pretty. So I will put some pictures in at the end and lots of foxgloves. It's foxglove season over in the forest. So I will leave you with the photos and I know a lot of you do enjoy my photos. So thank you for letting me continue to share them with you. I hope you all have an amazing weekend. Um, a week ahead and I hopefully will do a Friday sews from the holiday home next week because I'm hoping I will have actually done some sewing and maybe a bit of fabric shopping so who knows. Thank you so much for watching me and I really do appreciate the time that you take out of your day to not only sit and watch my videos but to also comment and show your appreciation. You're always so kind, thank you so much. Um, you're always so complimentary and I, I really do appreciate that. Congratulations again to Barbara for winning the prize. Don't forget to get in touch with me and we will get your prize on your way. Thank you again and have a good weekend.